Six Ages Gaming is brought to you by GamersGauntlet.net. Check them out for all your singles, sealed product, and play mats. Hey guys, welcome to another Deck Spotlight video brought to you by Gamers Gauntlet and Six Ages Gaming. Uh, today I have for you the Blue Black Kind of Control Gil Lapis deck. It uh, made top four, I believe it was, out of Italy. Um, I think I changed a few cards, so it's not the exact list. It is definitely a fun deck to play as long as you don't see any red decks, because you're probably going to have a really bad time against them. Uh, the way you get to live the dream out of them is if you open up Double Globe and you just race them, and then you're fine, but um, it's a pretty hard matchup otherwise. But it was a ton of fun to play. I really like having a more blue-black kind of deck that's relevant. Uh, I think it can definitely have the opportunity to be good in the right meta, so it's definitely worth checking out. Um, first, I'll talk about the ruler himself, uh, get into the stone base, and then finally talk about the main deck. So up first we have the ruler, Gil Lapis himself. Um, on his ruler side, you'll notice he really just has the judgment ability for three total. And then he has the regalia attack, so anytime that your opponent wants to activate the regalia, it costs one void more. Um, that hasn't been super relevant. Obviously, if you have a meta where they're playing a lot of Valentina 2.0, it can certainly shut them down uh, pretty easily because we play one barrier. So usually, uh, to beat the Valentina decks, you need two barriers in the deck. Uh, but if you have him on his ruler side plus one barrier, it's usually just enough. Uh, and then on his J ruler side, it's a 12-12 body. Uh, you play the one of Pitch Black Moon, so it becomes a 14-14, which is actually super relative, uh, relevant. rather. Uh, he has a moon, which is can counter target activated abilities. Uh, so yes, you can counter God Arts uh, for the low, low cost of moon, which is also really great because that's what his uh, regalia can tap for. Um, the darkened one to shrink something by negative 200, negative 200 hasn't been super relevant, but it's still something nice to have for combat tricks. And then he has his god art, which you get to steal a resonator, a regalia, and a field edition, or edition field, out of your opponent's deck. Now, a lot of people always get this confused. Yes, you do get to steal all three if they have it. Obviously, if they don't have any regalia, then you don't get to take any regalia, but it's not a pick one. It's a yes, you get to have it all. So um, a lot of us thought that this was going to be a very powerful... Uh, J ruler, you know, he's gonna have very strong effects. Um, I definitely think he's a, a good J ruler, he's just very meta dependent. So, this is something that, um, you know, might not be good at your locals right now, but especially, you know, maybe when A4 comes out or if he just the meta alliance for it, it's something I'd definitely keep in mind uh, in terms of playability. So, uh, up first, we have the stone base, then. Uh, so, we t play two of the magic moon shade. Uh, we do need to play a lot of moon sources, and this just is, allows us to have perfect will. It uh, gives us a couple more blue sources in the deck. Um, you'll notice that we do play 10 special stones, and I know people are going to say, well, what about split? Well, more often than not, you're going to be stopping on two or three stones. Uh, some games you'll see that we have the Lucifer, so you'll go up to four, but uh, that's not always relevant. Then we're playing four magic stone of dark depths. Again, everything is going to be blue or black, so this just gives us the perfect will base. And then lastly, we have four of the uh, Black Moon's Memoria. Again, we need to tap for Moon, and it produces black, so... Uh, because we're already a deck that doesn't really care about Split, or at least shouldn't care about Split, we just decided to run four of these as well, so we can still tap for Moon, which is, again, relevant for his J Ruler sides and to Judgment him. So, going to the zeros, we have a Horn for our Regalia. Um, yeah, it can pump him by plus 200, plus 200, which is nice. Um, a lot of it, too, is just being able to shuffle your graveyard back into your deck. Yeah, we play stuff like Izanami and stuff like that where we, you know, get value out of it while it's in the graveyard, but sometimes you'll play the long, grindy matchups where you just need to refresh your deck, so having a horn in there is always good. Uh, the list out of Italy played two Death Scythes. Um, it's great to pump Gil again. Uh, gives him plus 200, plus 200. The other cute thing it does is before you refresh your or recycle your graveyard back into the deck, uh, if you discard this off, say, Soul Hunt, you can get rid of all the clutter, you know, that's in your graveyard before you recycle. So if you don't want Soul Hunts for later in the game, you can just cycle those out with Death Sight's ability to, from, to return from graveyard to your hand and things of that nature. So it's a great way to thin out your graveyard so you only have the relevant effects. Uh, then because to hate out on other Regalia decks and because it can prevent 200, 200 damage to kill, we play to Mary Bell. Um, again, sometimes just preventing that 200 extra damage is super relevant. Once you Judgment Gil and he becomes a 14-14 because you play the Pitch Black Moon, it really is hard to overcome that if you have even one Mary Bell in play. So it's definitely worth playing some number of them so you can have that extra protection against uh, the other decks. And then probably just the most important card for him is having his Regalia. 
So it lets you produce a moon so you can, you know, sometimes live the dream and have like a turn two judgment with turn one stone and turn two having two globes. Um, and depending on the decks, if you know that they're not running, say, Crime and Punishment or some kind of dedicated anti-J ruler, you know, strategies, by just leaving up two globes for your next turn, you can probably run away with the game because you're hitting for 14 uh, every turn and then you have abilities to cancel, or rather you can cancel or activate abilities while having these up. So that's something that can be very relevant as well. So getting into our one drops, uh, two barriers of shadow. Uh, again, regalia attacks is super important, but also because this can prevent them from judgmenting. So if we're going against like a Sylvia or something and we're trying to race them, we don't want them to be able to judgment early. So playing even one of these and making it really hard for them to tap their demon swords uh, can help us hedge against that matchup. Since we're playing blue, might as well play the best blue resonator in the game, Cheshire Cat. Um, it lets us block the early threats, it lets us filter our hand, if we draw our pitch black moon we can put it back on top and then Judgment to get a Lapis. Pro tip, it's really helpful when that when that moon's not in your hand and you forget to uh, have Cheshire Cat. You have Cheshire Cat, so please don't be like me and do that. Um, otherwise, just an overall great blocker. Uh, four, Scorn and Dark Alice. Um, well, there's two card, two things about this card. One, information on what your opponent is playing is super relevant, especially if you want to go for that really early judgment. You want to see what's in their hand and see how their next couple turns are going to play out. And also, if you're going against, say, Alice's World, if you hit their Quiber with this, or depending on what the board state's like, and if you hit their, you know, Morgiana or something, uh, there is a lot of value you can generate off playing these. So the deck did play four because you just always, always, always want to see it early enough. Uh, a card that's been testing out pretty great for a lot of people has been Soul Hunt. Um, because this deck gets to play things like Death Scythe and Iznami and other cards that get value out of the graveyard, this is probably one of the best Soul Hunt based decks that I've seen. Uh, Space Time Anomaly is another great card to play where you can get value out of the graveyard, so there's always going to be something in your hand that's worth discarding, and then you know, you're making your opponent discard a card they might otherwise not want to have or they might want to have, and then you can, you know, make that life a lot harder on Alice World players. Uh, going into our two drops, we have the one of Pitch Black Moon. Uh, this is great because it lets you cycle your resonators that you don't really care for. You can discard a resonator, get a target resonator from your graveyard back, and again, it bumps skill by 200-200, which can be extremely, extremely relevant uh, in certain matchups. Um, two, Spiral of Despair. This card is basically just a lifesaver. If you're on the play and you get to resolve this against a red deck, you're going to be feeling pretty great. You know, that's effectively, depending on what they discard, I've seen this card uh, gain any... This card basically says your opponent loses two cards and you gain a thousand life. Uh, a lot of it is thinking about your effective life total. If they discard, let's say, a Purifying Fire and a Landslot or something, and if you didn't have the answer for that Landslot on the next turn, that's uh, effectively increasing your life total and helping you last a little bit longer in that matchup. Uh, two Stoning Death, uh, just great instant speed removal. Uh, two Dark, which thankfully all, all our stones can tap for Dark, so we're always going to have it. And there's going to be some cases where a Dex might have like Susan and Ame, and you have to have the instant speed removal, uh, or sometimes you're just going to die. So a lot of the deck does operate on more uh, spell chant speed, so that's something you have to keep in mind. I wanted to fit a third one in there and just didn't. Uh, another card that I've been absolutely in love with is Dark Faria. Uh, Pay four, you can kill something on her enter. Uh, otherwise, again, just having that early, having that early blocker, having, being able to deal 500 damage and healing for 500, can again really swing the matchup in your favor. And once you know you connect a few times with this card, you should be far enough ahead against the more aggressive strategies. Soul Soul Hunt target number one and or something just to chump on turn two. Uh, Izanami gets insane value when you realize that she's in the graveyard and she can either make your opponent discard a card or you can just kill something. And there's been so many times where I was playing this deck and I would discard an early Izanami, my opponent would forget about it, they go down like one card or they think that they'd be safe, and then in either my draw step or in combat I'll just kill the Resonator and swing for game. So this is a card I'm definitely expecting to see a lot more of, hopefully in the near future just because of all the utility that it gives in the mid to late game. If not early game, just being able to block something. Um, if you've been reading any of my posts or know how much I've talked about this card, again, hands down, one of my favorite cards from this set. Uh, Space Time Anomaly just does it all. Uh, negative five, negative 500 something can be super relevant. 
But what's great is that, one, it draws a card, so that's always great. And two, it has remnant, so you're always going to be able to play it for again and draw another card. So normally in a case where you'd be hitting uh, neutrality, where you're getting a zero value out of this because it draws a card, you can actually go plus one once you play it with the flashback or remnant effect. So, you know, sometimes it'll be where you play this in your draw step, you can shrink something, untap, target the same thing, and effectively shrink something by a thousand, uh, which can be, you know, is oftentimes enough to kill just about everything. Um, and again, the fact that it's drawing you a card has been absolutely insane. So this has been one of my favorite cards, probably out of <laughs> Alice Block in general, and I really hope that we do get to see more decks that play with this card. And then lastly, it plays a four, uh, not sorry, two of the four drop Lucifer, um, coming into play and making your opponent sacrifice a resonator is just great value. It's a 9-9, which is kind of hard to deal with. You know, Flames has basically fallen off uh, from playability, but in case that someone wanted to play Flames, uh, it gets to dodge that, and then the fact that it has some kind of lifelink or the ability to gain life can really do a lot for you uh, in the mirror match or in any other mid-range match where you're trying to control the board. Uh, I was playing against a blue-black uh, Xion deck, at locals and basically just getting to resolve my Lucifer and keep it on board and then getting to gain 900 life uh, every single turn is what really helped uh, win that matchup and run away with the game. So that's all for the main deck. And then lastly I'll just talk about some quick sideboarding options. Uh, Mephistopheles. And I'm pretty sure this is just a list straight from Italy so I haven't got to test all of these but I know what more or less the majority of them are going to be good for. Uh, Mephistopheles is just a great 15-15 beater. Um, the fact that your opponent has to lose 500 life when they target him with something has always been a good thing. So in the more control mid-range mirrors where they're going to be, you know, exhausting a lot of resources, sometimes you'll just get to play this guy, resolve him, and, you know, he'll end the game in one or two turns himself, depending on how low the life totals are. Uh, one of Glimpse, uh, just countering activated abilities is great. If you don't have him on his Jailer's side and just need to counter an early God Art or any kind of activation for that matter, if you want to stop, reflect, or sorry, refrain from tutoring for something, that's great too. And again, it draws a card, so it's a great way to get value back in your favor. Uh, the sideboard had two awakening at the end. Uh, maybe they have a lot of fairy players. Um, not a lot of people play swarm decks, at least in the United States that I've been seeing, so this is definitely more of a techie option. Um, still a great card just to keep in mind in general in case you're seeing like a lot of fairy decks at your locals. Um, it played a Schrodinger's Cat, but that also played a Dark Alice out of the sideboard. I think this is just for another strategy where if your opponent is very graveyard heavy, uh, Dark Alice can eat cards out of their graveyard, for example, like the Necromancy Rush deck. And then, of course, you want to be playing some number of Schrodinger's uh, Cats just because it can make Dark Alice bigger. It combos with her God Art, and it's a free uh, will producing s source once you use her God Art. Uh, one of Recollection of Dystopia, uh, I think I actually added this one in as just another edict effect. And because we're already playing Dark Alice, it does combo with her God Art as well. Um, and I think it's just a beautiful card, so I was biased in putting it in there, but I did. And then lastly, just for more Regalia Hate, we have some number of Hera. We had three in the sideboard, um, strictly because a lot of people are still running zero-cost Regalia. So it's still a 5-5 body, and it's going to draw you a card. And then lastly, I had these in the place of the Stonings, and I ended up putting the Stonings back in. Uh, space-time collapse, just being able to destroy a Resonator and Regalia, uh, can do a lot in certain matchups. So I think this is definitely a card. Uh, if I was going to switch around the deck a little bit more, I'd probably run a 2-2 mix of Stoning and Space-Time Collapse. But that, more or less, is the Guild deck. Uh, I definitely hope you guys will try it out at your locals. Um, it's something new, and I think that's always going to be the most refreshing thing that Italy always has for us. They give us these new lists to try, so... Make sure you guys test out your lo locals. Let us know what worked out for you, what didn't work out for you, what kind of changes that you would make. Um, again, I think that the Spice Time Collapses should probably be main deck again, uh, just because they're being able to two for one your opponent is always, always, always such a win. So, thanks again, guys, for watching. Uh, shout out again to Gamers Gauntlet for all your TCG needs. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel for more f future forceful content, and we'll see you guys on the next Deck Spotlight, brought to you by Six Sages Gaming. Have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and leave us a comment with what you thought of the video. Don't forget to subscribe to Six Age Gaming and check out some of the deck spotlights, dual series, and Force of Community videos that are already on the channel. We also have a Facebook and a Twitter, so feel free to find us there. 
Lastly, if you have a deck that you would like featured in a video, be sure to drop us a comment below. Until next time, take it easy.